Hey everybody, Mike B. back here with another episode of the Vietnam War. Um, today we're going to be doing part two of the North Vietnamese, NLF, PAVN, the United States and its allies, enemies, weapons during the Vietnam War. Um, so when I say NVA, if you didn't see the first video, uh, I mean all of those groups, the Viet Cong, everybody, the Viet Minh, starting in, we'll say, 1945, right? From fighting against the French all the way to the United States and South Vietnamese and Australian and um, Korean forces. So that's just a little disclaimer so you don't sit there and go, well, the NVA didn't just use these. I understand that. But for the sake of brevity, even though I'm ranting about it for 30 seconds, um, that's just when I say NVA, I'm going to, you know, that's, that's what I mean. So these are the weapons, uh, specifically semi-automatic and automatic rifles used by the NVA. Um, this started in, again, the 1950s really heavily. Um, 1945, technically, they started kind of um, getting the idea that maybe they wanted to be independent. So, um, but we're going to focus on them starting to fight the French and then all the way through to the end. So, um, the first thing we're going to start out with is uh, the AK-47, okay? The actual AK-47. Now, there's a bunch of variants of the AK-47, but the original Soviet one was used and supplied by the Soviet Union um, pretty early on to the North Vietnamese um, in the mid-50s. Early on because the weapon was kept very secret for a long time. Um, cartridges were, you know, picked up because they didn't want people to find out they had this, you know, super weapon, which it kind of is. And uh, so that's pretty interesting. They started sending it to the North Vietnamese forces very early on. Uh, so we've got the AK-47, the Soviet one, and here's a picture of... Uh, uh, North Vietnamese or Viet Cong soldier actually holding one. You can tell by the milled receiver, the wooden hand, guard, or, uh, hand grip, sorry, and the lack of a folding bayonet, which we'll get to, and also the lack of a muzzle device, just a little nut on the end. Um, so those were used throughout the entire conflict. Very effective weapon. Um, so yeah, now we'll get on to another variant of the AK-47, which is the AKM or AK Modified. Uh, their word, the Russian word for modified, I don't remember what it is. Anyway, this, this featured a stamped receiver and um, usually a, a muzzle brake on the end, a slant one or something like that. Some of them had just nuts on the end, just like the AK-47. But you can just tell it's a milled receiver and it's going to have a... Um, they still had the wooden grips, but they also had Bakelite and other things like that. So the AKM is going to be seen kind of later on in the mid-60s, mainly against the United States and Allied forces. So there's that. And then... Very early on, the Soviets gave them a few Sturmgewehr 44s. So, for all you guys, all you fanboys that like this weapon, they were used not very extensively, but here's a picture of a United States soldier um, firing one and kind of messing with one that was captured by North Vietnamese forces. So, very interesting that those were used and also supplied by the Soviets because they were captured by the Soviets from the Germans and they were just these weapons that were sitting around that they could kind of send off and... Um, you know, it would support their cause, we'll, we'll just say. So now we're going to move into some cool stuff. Uh, this is a very, very prominently used weapon in, in the Vietnam War by the North Vietnamese forces. You got the SKS Seminov rifle, right? Most of these that were used were actually Chinese Type 56 SKS rifles. A few Soviet ones were sent, but it was still a fairly new weapon at that point, 1945. So in the early to mid-1950s, they're going to be using Soviet SKSs, but then by the late 50s and then throughout the rest of it, it's going to be the Chinese Type 56. Now, the Chinese Type 56 started being made with a folding blade bayonet, um, which makes it look identical to the Soviet one, so it's kind of hard to tell in pictures. But then um, they started using the um, the spike bayonet, the cruci I think it was cruciform, yep. Um, spike bayonet folding underneath there, so that's a pretty easy way to tell that it's Chinese, and most of the ones you're going to see that the North Vietnamese forces use are the ones with the spike bayonets, that's what I've encountered at least. So that's pretty interesting. And then the Chinese also supplied later on the Type 56 assault rifle. So this was actually really widely used, I think more so than say an AKM or an AK-47 rifle. Because you could tell in pictures, there's just two distinct features to the Type 56. A, it looks kind of bulkier and more stout. Most of, them, most of the early ones had a milled receiver still. But uh, it's got the addition of a folding spike bayonet underneath. And if you look really closely, the front sight globe that protects the front sight um, pin is going to be a full globe instead of just the, the kind of um, Soviet style with the fins on it. So if you look really closely and it's a fully enclosed globe on the front sight, that's going to be a Chinese Type 56. 
Now they also sent the Type 56-1, which is just gonna have a folding stock on it, which you can see here. And um, those were widely used as well. But mainly you're gonna see the fixed stock, the regular Type 56 rifles used. Um, and then in very limited numbers, late 1950s and 60s, they turned up. Um, I've heard people that were in Vietnam tell me this because they're gun nuts and like, yeah, we found a couple Czechoslovakian VZ-52 rifles. I was like, well, that's kind of weird. The ammo for those is really, you know, odd in the, the 7.62 by 45. Very, very weird cartridge. So that's probably why they weren't widely used. Um, the, the, the VZ-52 57s that were rechambered to 7.62 39 um, would make more sense because they were using that caliber. So that's probably why they didn't see extensive use, but they still turned up in weapons caches. So that's pretty interesting. And then later on, they got the VZ-58 rifle or assault rifle from the Czechoslovakian military. Not insanely big numbers of these were used, but they're still very prevalent, found in weapons caches. And you can hear the, uh, ask a lot of Vietnam vets, though. If they know their guns, they'll, they'll be able to say, yeah, they, they were there, definitely. Because they're not quite an AK, so the magazines were not interchangeable, and it's not an AK platform. It just kind of resembles one. So that would, that would pose a logistical issue, which is probably why they weren't used that widely, although they were still using the same caliber, which is a big plus. So I've got the VZ-58 rifle. The last AK variant that I've seen that's widely used um, is the North Korean Type 58, pretty much copy of the AK-47. So these were supplied in limited numbers to the North Vietnamese forces took the same magazines, same caliber. It's pretty much an AK-47 just from a different country that supports communism. These are extremely rare in the United States, but they were actually fairly common in the North Vietnamese forces, which is really interesting. You'd really be hard pressed to look, cause they look just like an AK-47 in pictures, but you could tell like on this one that I've got up right now, if you look really closely at the selector switch, the characters are in Korean instead of Russian or um, um, or Chinese, so or Mandarin or Cantonese or whatever they had. So that's pretty interesting. You've got the uh, North Koreans supplying them too. So you've got pretty much every communist country that believed in the North Vietnamese movement supplying them with arms, which is pretty cool. I've actually seen a real Type 58, actually a couple of them at a local museum. They're super hard to find, and there's a pretty cool story with the one attached to that. Maybe I'll do a video on that separately when I go up to the museum and they, they let me film. But anyway, so the North Korean Type 58. Now, the next semi-automatic rifle is pretty interesting. It was captured from the French, and it's gonna be the Moss 49, right? So this is chambered in 7.5 by 54 French, which was very common in Vietnam at that time because the French had occupied Indochina and used that cartridge from about the you know, 1936 until they left. So they could find ammo for it. It's a nice rifle. It's a little bit heavy, but it worked really well. And that was a really cool rifle for them to use because again, ammo was plentiful and they were familiar with it. So they used the Moss 49 quite a bit. And you can also ask people and I tried to find a picture of one being used, but again, it, unless somebody labels the photo, you know, Moss 49 in Viet Cong or NVA hands, it's really hard to find that. Um, I'll keep tracking down and doing some research. But again, I've talked to people who said they found them among, you know, other French firearms. So the Moss 49. And then again, this thing pops up. This is probably one of the most popular weapons of the entire Vietnam War is the M1 slash M2 carbine. The North Vietnamese forces really liked this because A, they were small, um, the, the rifles, the people were rather small too. <clears throat> In comparison to United States soldiers, Vietnamese forces of basically, you know, South Vietnamese, North Vietnamese, were a lot smaller in stature than the United States forces. So they liked the M1 and M2 carbine because it was small, very lightweight, and could be easily transported if they're going underground in a tunnel where there's not a lot of space. The AK is getting a little bit bigger and bulkier, and um, so that's why the M1 and M2 carbine and it, were, were used, and the ammo was widely available because they'd capture it. Um, it's a fairly reliable weapon if you take care of it, and very accurate if the barrel's not completely shot out. And the M2 carbine, you fire a burst of that into somebody, I don't care how small the caliber is, they're gonna, they're gonna feel it. So very extensively used by everybody basically in the Vietnam War. Now we've got the M1 Garand. So what happened is when we realized, when we started getting involved in the late 1950s, the, we being the US, 
We supplied the South Vietnamese military with a bunch of leftover World War II and Korean era weapons because we were phasing over to the M14 and this newer kind of weaponry. So we gave them a bunch of stuff. Among that, we gave them a bunch of M1s. And the uh, South Vietnamese forces use these throughout the entire conflict. And guess what happens when you're facing an enemy and you take losses? Your enemy's gonna capture your weapons and use them against you. So that's what the North Vietnamese did. Again, you can capture ammo with it. It's a reliable rifle. It's a, it's a game ender. Definitely you get hit with that, you're probably not gonna be getting back up. Very heavy, very big, but it's a weapon. They believe in their cause, they're gonna do anything to protect that, and they use whatever they could get. So, at the M1 Garand. And then again, going into captured weapons, I'm trying to go kind of chronologically, so this is by the time the US is getting here. Um, you've got the M14, they would capture those. Again, big and bulky, but ammo was readily available. You hit somebody with a 76251, they're again, probably not gonna get back up. So they'd capture these weapons and use them, and they you can see them using them the whole time. Um, now we go on to the M16 series. So the M16, the XM16E1, and the M16A1. Lots of pictures of the uh, Viet Cong specifically, forces using these. Again, you're facing an enemy, they've got weapons and ammo, you kill a bunch of their guys, they leave that stuff there, you grab it, you're gonna use it. So that's the case with all these uh, M16s. And with the M16s, you've got the XM177, both the 177 and the 177E1, and E2, you know, the forward assist versus the non-forward assist. Those were used extensively by North Vietnamese and Viet Cong forces as well, just for the same reasons as the M16, and the M14, and the M1 Garand, and the M1 Carbine. They get captured. They like the XM177 because, again, it's smaller and more lightweight. Be easily transported and hidden, too. So now we're going to get into some of the later AKs, or a later AK model, and then a weird run we're going to finish off this specific video with. But... So this next AK variant is the AMD-63. Okay, so this is a Hungarian AK that was kind of their improved version of the AKM. And it was made to be more soldier friendly, kind of. It's really ugly, but it actually works pretty well. They're, they're a pretty good platform. They're, they'll definitely take AK mags. They're just the same thing. There's just a few little differences in there. One being the addition of the forward facing um, vertical foregrip. And then kind of the heat shield's a little bit different on the handguard. Very interesting rifle. And uh, also the AMD-65 was used. I just can't find a good picture to throw up here. It's just this thing with a folding wire stock. That's about it. So the AMD-65 was used very limitedly in the later half of the 60s and into the 70s. Not a lot of them were used, but they were. They did turn up, just like the VZ-58 and stuff like that. Now, we're going to end this. Very limited numbers, but these were actually seen and, and it's been documented. Again, I can't find pictures of it because A, North Vietnamese pictures are hard to find in the first place. And B, there were so few of these used, but they're really interesting. We've got the Chinese Type 63 assault rifle. So this is kind of a concept of them taking three or four different weapons, you know, the SVT, the SVT-40, the SKS, and the AK, and kind of throwing it into a rifle. That It's weird. And they, they designed this thing, and they had very limited use with the Chinese military. I mean, they did use it through the 60s, but then the Type 56 proved to be more popular, and people liked it better. So... It, they weren't widely made in China to begin with, and they were very used very limitedly in Vietnam. They turned up in the early 1970s, so not really enough to make a huge difference, you know, in the in the arms race that was going on there. But they were still used and documented, so I threw it in here. It's kind of interesting too. It's a weird rifle. If you ever get get bored, go Google that and do some research. It's pretty interesting. So that takes care of what I've researched and what I've known to have, to have been used by North Vietnamese forces in the Vietnam War. These are just semi-automatic and automatic rifles. Um, if you check out my other videos in this playlist, you'll see that there's plenty more weapons. I will be making the bolt action and kind of single shot and shotgun video after this. I had to chunk the Vietnamese weapon or the North Vietnamese weapons portion up into a few parts just because they were so extensive. And if I made it all in one video, it would take over an hour of me just sitting here going over everything. So I decided to chunk it up for the sake of you guys um, and your attention spans. Because I know I can't watch a video for an hour of some guy talking about guns. So, yeah, we'll be doing that stuff in the future. Um, this is part two. I think it's going to be four or five parts on this one. Something like that. We'll see. So, anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button and um, the notification bell. And then give me a thumbs up on this video. Uh, feel free to comment below if you got any questions. 
again, this probably isn't the complete list of what was used by North Vietnamese forces in the Vietnam War for semi-automatic and automatic rifles, but this is just what is well known and kind of gets you started on that. I can't possibly, nobody can possibly find every single weapon from everywhere that turned up in uh, North Vietnamese hands during that conflict. It's pretty insane, but these are going to be the most popular ones. So, all right. Thanks for watching everybody and we'll see you on the next video.